Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our backyard. This morning's video, I'd like to do a little bit of a plant update on some of the plants that I have in our mid-June, I guess you could say, garden. My name is Crystal, and I garden in Zone 9 along the southeast Texas coast south of Houston and we have typically lots of rain, high heat, high humidity and heavy clay soil and we've been getting lots of rain lately. In fact I've got standing water in the yard and this morning we're I think 92 or 93 percent humidity. It's crazy. So I apologize for, it's, it's early morning, and I like to tape in the very early morning because the, the shadows and the sun is just better. The colors are more true. Later in the day, the colors in the garden get pretty washed out. But I apologize for the loud sound. I think I've got a neighbor, <laughs> a neighbor, um, mowing before seven which is which is unusual but in any case the plant update I would like to provide is there's a few plants that I just want to point out how they're doing and what my original plan was and 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 how it's going so what you're looking at right now is our shade garden and I am really really pleased with how this shade garden is looking. The first plant I want to point out is this one. This one is a ground cover. It is the white veined Dutchman's pipe vine, Aristolochia fimbriata, and this plant has been eaten to the ground twice already since March, completely down to nothing from my Pipe vine swallowtail caterpillars and I've been this is why I grow this and I wanted to show you how quickly it will start to come back and I know they've been in here already laying eggs so this will get eaten down to the ground again and it does not hurt the plant at all and it doesn't miss a beat I've mentioned the prior time it got eaten to the ground, we had over a hundred caterpillars. And I had to put them on this vine, which grows up into our red tip tree. This vine is Aristolochia tomentosa, or the woolly Dutchman's pipe vine. And so they ate a good portion of that. I have noticed the pipe vines laying eggs again, which is wonderful, and this is why I plant this. So I wanted to show that update. And the other update I wanted to show you is the color. So I was hoping to achieve some drama along this garden bed. And as you know, I have planted last year and this year some really dark colored coleus. This one happens to be Beale Street from the Main Street series and then Riverwalk and I love the way this coleus looks and how it pops in the garden and here I planted a special coleus it's growing beautifully it's called um, oh gee it's from Proven Winners it's El Brito and I expected this to be a little bit more bright. It doesn't get tons of sun, more like along this line, but it is a little bit more subdued because it's not getting as much light. And so when I looked around, I don't really want more greenish type color in here. So now I'm wishing I would have put in, in this container, I wish I would have put in put a col uh, caladium in. So let me show you from the other angle. This is what I see from my kitchen window, my patio, my patio window. And it pretty much just gets lost in here and I wanted a really nice pop of color. 
And when I look in my garden, I should have thought caladium. And in fact, as you know, I planted caladiums all along my fence here from tubers from Costco. And I think I have found the colors I should have put in this spot to really add, to make it pop. These caladium bulbs are doing tremendously well and I love how they're performing. This one in particular I think is called White Queen, I think, and it really has some drama. Look at my hand in comparison to these leaves. Look at that. So I think a color a lighter color like this or maybe even a color like this this might have been a better choice in that area now i'm in the back of this the shade garden what do you think i think a caladium would have would have done well i also purchased another coleus and this one was called Blair's Witch. And this was supposed to be really brightly colored also. Um, and it's a little bit more subdued. I am not disappointed with the growth. They're gonna end up flowering at the end of the season. But I was hoping for a little bit more drama over here. So anyway, what do you think? Remember, hookahs do not do do not grow well here. Hostas don't grow well here. So, caladiums and coleus grow beautifully here. And as you can see, you can achieve drama in the southern humid garden, even though you can't grow some of those plants. Okay, so my next update I want to give you is right next to it. This beautiful stand is Salvia madrensis, which is a more of a shade-loving salvia. And as I have mentioned in the past, it starts to bloom for me, heavily bloom in October. But last year it did this too. It started to create bloom heads. It didn't bloom much, it just bloomed a little bit. And this salvia is gorgeous. I love the leaf structure on it, the large leaves, the color, the texture. And when they do bloom, they bloom a butter yellow, very long, up to two feet long. Bloomed, bloom calyx, that's just beautiful. But I was surprised to see that they are starting to create these bloom heads. They still bloomed beautifully in the fall, but I got a tad bit of colors in the early summer, so we'll see if that's still the case this year. Okay, the next update is not so pretty, <laughs> and this is a, a container of my calla lilies and the callas are getting eaten up by the leaf rollers or the Brazilian skipper butterfly and they're blooming which I'm really happy with because a lot of the pollinators like sorry these are canna I think I said calla I didn't mean calla I don't grow calla lilies these are cannas and the foliage is not is not pretty. Now here's the interesting thing. I am a butterfly, hummingbird, and pollinator gardener. And I plant specifically to get butterflies. I did not for this though. I wanted the cannas for the beautiful foliage and the flowers. The Brazilian skipper is, a, is not a particularly pretty or noteworthy butterfly. It's just kind of small and drab. And 
I don't like what it's doing <laughs> to my canna. This is the only plant that I have not intentionally planted for butterflies. It does get a tad bit more shade because over here, I also have cannas. Let me go over there. And these canna lilies so far are not getting eaten up by by the Brazilian skipper caterpillars and they are blooming real nicely. These do get a little bit more sun and cannas want sun and so interesting if you do not give your plants what they need or what's optimal for them they are more susceptible to pests and of course uh, a butterfly caterpillar would be a pest. As you can see, I have standing water. We've gotten so much rain lately that the ground is not soaking it up. So that's an interesting, interesting thing for me. Am I treating the plant? No. So I am that butterfly gardener. Will I plant cannas again? I don't know. Or maybe what I need to do is make sure that it is in full sun because this does get some shade in the afternoon. So I did wanted to give you that update because you know, that's what's happening real in the garden. So the next plant updates I want to give you are in the trellis bed in what I call our tree bed here. So the trellis bed first is growing exactly how I had hoped. The vines are doing beautiful and my flame acanthus has been flowering. We've gotten so much rain that they are leaning and I'm gonna have to bring them back up. But I wanted to show you what these blooms are like. Look at this gorgeousness. These blooms are a tubular shape and butterflies and hummingbirds absolutely love this native plant. It's hardy, doesn't have a lot of pests. It just, it's one of those plants that I plant it and leave it and let it do its thing. It's blooming all along here and Every now and then I have to help prop it up if I don't cut it back. And I didn't cut it because I have all these blooms and I don't want to cut the blooms. See all those? They are gonna be blooming. And I can see why it's called flame acanthus because it looks like the tips of this plant are on fire. It's just gorgeous. But I do, I will need to bring these back up because they are a little bit leaning over because of the heavy rains. And next to it, I have this wonderful plant called a kufia, and it is a hummingbird magnet. I've talked about this plant before. This is a David Verity kufia and it flowers prolifically. You can see why the hummingbird would like this flower. Bees, native bees and butterflies also love kufia or cigar plant. And I wanted to share this with you. Let me get it another angle. I have it in a terracotta container, glazed terracotta container, and it grows, it's the largest of the kufia and it grows so beautifully. I have overwintered them and I've come to realize I prefer starting new each year because overwintering, even though I cut them back, they don't flower as gorgeously the next year like this. So down here we have such a long growing season, you know, it's this is blooming in March 
and it will bloom all the way until frost and so it does it does have a long producing season and I just like it to be really full and full of flowers. All right, the next plant is a volunteer and it's up here and I'm gonna go on the back side. So this is a volunteer passion vine and I could kick myself because <laughs> The passion vine grows natural here. This is where I want it to be. And I had one small little runner that I let grow in my salvia bed. And I am not liking this. So it is going to cover the top of the salvia, albeit it's pretty, and it is a host plant to my gulf fritillary. I don't need it. And so now I'm going to have to contend and deal with this plant that I let come up. I was hoping I could contain it on this pole. And look, it, it grew up, but then it came down. And it's like, no, I'll just go over the tops of the salvia. I like this. And of course, I do not. And so you can see already, ugh what it's doing. I am not happy with this. So I'm going to have a lot of work for myself. Mm. Live and learn. The next plant I would like to give you an update on is my giant milkweed. And this happens to be in my south garden bed that I don't see unless I come around the corner. And I had gorgeous giant milkweed, some in containers, some I could not save from our last freeze because they were just too tall. They were probably eight, nine feet tall and I have cut the tops off. But I was curious, is this gonna come back because they are tropical and subtropical and these are for the monarch butterflies. In fact, you know why I like them is because they have such thick leaves that they support a lot of monarch caterpillars. But I didn't know what was going to happen. And I just waited and waited and waited patiently. And all three are now bringing up giant milkweed from the roots. So we did freeze this past winter. We got down to 19. I think it was 19.2 my sensor showed in my gardens. And so that's pretty darn cold, but all of them are coming back. So that is a good data point for me in my giant milkweed. And then next to it, I have my coral honeysuckle that I have planted in ground on this side and then in containers along this side that I have trellised. And this is the newest container that I planted. And that container we drilled out, or I should say cut out the entire bottom because I want to try out the method of having bottomless containers so the roots can grow down into the ground. The reason this side is, con is in containers is because of the very poor drainage that we have. And so plant root balls would be underground, underwater sometimes for days, if not a couple of weeks. And many plants would drown having those conditions. And so on this side, you will see I have some containers and I do I've been pretty successful, especially some plants that are picky and finicky, like Budlia or butterfly bush that does not like wet feet. And if I have them in containers, I have much more luck with them. But I'll keep you updated on my newest coral honeysuckle because I really like what I'm seeing so far. 
And my last plant update I would like to share with you happens to be in our newest garden bed that we created, which is a full sun garden bed. And we put this in in April. And I am so pleased with how the plants are producing and how they are growing and looking. And my comment though happens to be on Tithonia or the Mexican sunflower. And I'm gonna get a tad bit closer. As I have mentioned in prior videos, I love this flower. It is a perfect flower for the butterfly. It has this wonderful landing pad of a flower and it grows high, really high. Last year it got over eight feet tall. Right now it is already approaching six and a half feet because that is how tall my fence is. And I have butterflies on this all throughout the day. I love it. We did have some storms recently and I've shared with you that I they've it pretty much flattened these down. They were laying down on the ground and so we staked them with bamboo stakes. And I think it's they're doing okay with that. But there's two things that I want to point out about this plant. And the first thing is I so dislike the foliage when it dies off up the plant. And this is very typical of Mexican sunflower or Tithonia. Let me go around to the other side. When the plant is done with a leaf, this is what it does. And not only should you deadhead <laughs> the flowers, but for me, I dislike seeing that. And so I have to come in and, if you will, remove the leaves because I so dislike it. It doesn't deter me though from having Tithonia in the yard because it is such a wonderful, wonderful butterfly attractor. So that's the first comment I want to say. The second comment is down here in the south, plants will typically grow larger, taller and wider than what is on the recommended growth habits that you will see for the plants. So I followed, even though I know this, and when I planted this whole side of the garden, I measured out to make sure that I was good. And I was, <laughs> but they grow larger and they grow wider. And this poor little salvia down here, I think this is Ember's wish. She is totally surrounded by Tithonia. And you can see it's already starting to come into my hot lips. So note to self, even though I know this, I need to give a lot more space and a lot more room than what is advertised because they just grow so much more, so wonderfully down here in our growing environment. So those of you that are down here, always remember that. <laughs> because it's a good rule of thumb, give things more space. When I planted this, it looked like all I had was ground. And boy, it doesn't take long. It's not even June 15th yet. What is it, 14th, 12th, 14th? <sighs> I should know better. But anyway, thank you for joining me today. As I looked at some particular plants that I wanted to share with you. I've got a happy bird in the background. So I really hope that you have a wonderful day today. Thank you for joining me as I went around and shared with you some noteworthy items in our gardens this mid-June. 
and I hope to see you again soon.